terus Good fish. Still a fish. Good man. Yeah. Can I? I don't know if he should come out here. You all right? I don't know if you hadn't had a... You were trying to beach this somewhere? I've been there, done that before. No, I played it for about 30 seconds. I was like, I'm no wet. Did I shout up or not? Yeah. I don't know how to bring oh. the oil. Yeah. Have you a dropper? No, I don't. I don't want to get in your way, but the rock just here. Nice enough fish, Chris. Yeah, head up, can you? Get this head up, you can. Every time he sees me, just die. He, every time he sees me, but he just goes straight down. It's an awkward place to get one. Happy days. Well done, you. Okay. 
I think I'm uh, <laughs> I owe you one. <laughs> I make the change for me and that's you. That's a nice fish. Then please come out in the net. See what Good job. Well done, sir. Thank you. Cheers. I'll finish right there and I'll come behind you. Okay. You wouldn't want to put your water in it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I'll let him aside, don't worry. You go ahead. Yeah. Oh, I don't have a net. <laughs> it's all right, I'll beat you. No, but same as yours. I just saw that uh, <laughs> I uh, I bring him in here, maybe. I think a wee, a wee band special, a dropper. A wee dropper, are they? On a single, a wee single. That's come out in the net as well. <laughs> okay, a wee quick picture. It's not, yours is a nicer fish, but a fish is a fish. You know, bragging lights are pretty long there. It's true, and uh... Worth the walk. It's worth the walk. Okay. I thought I had, I had uh, what do you call it, the rock? Thank you, sir. 
Returning the favour? <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if the fish are running through, you know, they could be. I don't know. It might sound quite obvious, but one of the most important things when you're doing any type of fishing is actually finding the fish. And salmon fishing is no different. There are many different places and situations where you might encounter a salmon. And one thing we know for sure, you might be using all the right tactics, the right setup, but if there's no salmon there, then you're certainly not going to catch one. At its simplest, you're really looking for resting fish and running fish, but this becomes much more difficult when you're fishing a bigger stretch of water or a bigger pool as the fish are naturally going to be much more spread out and so they're going to be harder to find. To improve my chances, what I always try to do is to try to find those places where the fish are going to be more concentrated and when the fish are running, one of the very best places to find them or to locate them are pinch points. But what are pinch points? Well, let's look at the video again as an example. Here I'm fishing the River Moore and it's at a medium to low height, so fairly good fishing conditions. And as you can see, there's, even at that height, there's still some fairly wide pools. However, I've chosen to fish at a place where the river narrows down into a much smaller taking zone. And I've marked this in red. And as you can see at this height, the river funnels down into a very narrow run on the far bank with a with run over at the very bottom. And as you can see with the yellow lines, this means that most of the fish that are running up river are going to be forced to run through this pinch point. A few fish may run up the sides before they join the, this narrow run as well. And I've marked that up with the blue arrows. So what this means is, rather than having to cast the whole width of the river, I'm fishing a much narrower taking area on that far bank. And this really gives me a much better chance of covering any fish that are running. I know it's harder to make out. Just upstream, Chris is also fishing at a pinch point where the bit natural bedrock forms a, a gully. And again, the fish have to channel through that. And then above that, then the river widens out again. And as you can see, it does make for quite tricky wading, but it is also a great place to intercept fish. And as you saw that with both Chris and, and, and my fish. Safe wading. I mean, it goes without saying that in places like this, you need to be very aware of the river conditions. If it has been raining upstream and raining all day, you know the river is going to rise, so that you certainly don't want to be out on a pinch point, because that's going to be one of the first places that the river is going to start to, to wide, and that can be a very dangerous situation. And it's also very important that you also know the safe waiting lines, where, how far do you need to go out, is there a drop off, so you need to be very aware and very careful of that. It's something I always try to do, whenever I'm fishing a new beat or a new pool, I always find it useful to take a look at the actual river bank before you start. And again, it might sound quite obvious, but this really gives you a very good clue to what the river is like under the water. So whatever the features and the topography of the river above the water, that generally will continue under the water. So it gives you an idea of what, sort of, what the waiting is going to be like. If the river is so high that none of the river bank is exposed, that's usually the time to fish from the bank and don't take any chance uh, waiting. This stretch here is, I suppose, is infamous uh, for its, its interesting waiting and it is very challenging. There's a combination of the natural bedrock, you've got these slanting rock ledges, sharp uh, rock ledges, you've got some quite deep drop offs, and a lot of loose boulders and, and rocks. So that all makes for very, uh, very tricky waiting. And it certainly isn't a stretch that I would fish, or I do fish in high water. You really need to be very, very careful with it. So I hope you find the behind the scenes useful. And if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Once again, thanks for watching and uh, tight lines for the new season, uh, 2023.